Hello all, I am Viru from electronicsinnovation.com. In the previous video, we have learned about LoRa communication. In this video, we will develop two devices for a real-time demonstration of LoRa communication with RFM95 LoRa module and ESP32 development kit. These simple LoRa devices are based on point-to-point -point LoRa communication topology. In point-to-point -point communication, two LoRa enabled devices will talk with each other using RF signals. As an example, we will build a simple LoRa sender and a LoRa receiver. The LoRa sender will be sending a Hello Electronics Innovation follower message followed by a counter for testing purposes. The receiver will receive it and show it on the serial monitor. Later, the same message can be easily replaced with valuable sensor data. Required components are RFM95 modules along with breadboard friendly PCB breakout boards 2, ESP32 modules 2, and Vara board 1. Making RFM95 LoRa transceiver breadboard friendly with the help of PCBWay.com. This RFM95 LoRa transceiver module does not breadboard friendly, which means we cannot solder these 2.54 mm male headers to it, or we can place it neither on breadboard nor wearer boards. So I have designed a PCB to make it breadboard friendly. We can extend the SMD pads of the RFM95 with the male headers as shown here, so that we can place it on both breadboards and wearer boards. The PCB looks something like this. The RFM module can be soldered here. In 3D view, the PCB looking gorgeous, right? I have generated the Kerber files and saved them into the available folder. Let's order PCBs on PCBWay.com. PCBWay.com is an online printer circuit board manufacturing enterprise that turns your DIY breadboard circuits into professional PCBs at just $5. To order the printer circuit boards, enter the dimensions of the PCB. Choose quantity as 10 pieces, select number of layers and thickness of the PCB, then click on quote now. Here we have a lot of options. We have to select them according to our requirement. Mostly we don't have to change anything. We have to make sure of layers, thickness, soldering mask and silk screen. Coming to the pricing and build time, I choose 6 to 7 days which is the cheaper one. Coming to the shipping method, there are different services available like DHL, FedEx, etc. However, out of all these, I'll choose DHL because of the lesser delivery time. Then save to cart. A pop-up will open to upload the Gerber file. Select the Gerber file from the previously saved location and upload it. Then submit the order. After that, PCBWay will show the status of the order as subject to audit. Then it will turn to being reviewed. At this time, some folks from the PCBWA will verify the Gerber file whether it is good to go for the manufacturing or any manufacturing difficulties are there. After some time, the status will turn to pass payment. This means our PCB is good to go and there are no difficulties. We can see the Gerber view of the PCB after passing the examination. If you see any errors on it, you raise a query or you can go back to the PCB designing platform and solve it. Now we can proceed to payment. Select your favorite mode of payment and complete the order. That's it. PCB is ordering on PCBWay.com successfully completed. This time it took me less than 7 days to get my parcel delivered to my lab from PCBWay via DHL courier service. As I have said in a previous video, everything comes well packed in the cardboard box. Here you can see the PCBs are neatly packed in the vacuum film packaging. PCBs are so lovely and I can feel the softness of the edges of the PCBs. Here you can see the soldering mask and silk screen of the PCBs are very good at quality. In addition, the border finishing added value to the PCBs. PCBWay.com has been an essential company that supports makers like me around the world building professional PCB projects. They also support some of your favorite YouTubers with their projects. Without PCBWay, some of the best projects posted on the online everyday wouldn't be existing or not available. I am feeling grateful to thank PCBWay.com for everything they are doing for the maker community. Let's start the assembling process of the PCBs. First of all, solder the RFM95 module on the PCB. 
While soldering any SMT components on the PCB, first we have to solder the diagonal pins of the IC, so that we will have a chance to correct the placement of the IC if it is placed wrong. Then continue soldering other pads. Then solder the antenna to the ANT pin of the RFM95 module. Later, try soldering male headers on both sides of the RFM95 module. If you have to solder the components on the other side of the PCB, first place them in the correct position and secure them in their respective places with a plaster. Then turn the PCB and continue soldering. That's it. The soldering process is completed. Now remove the plaster. Then repeat the same process for the other module. Always perform a continuity check after soldering. If there is any short circuit between any pads, we can identify and rectify here only. With this practice, we can eliminate so many future problems and save so much of time while waste on debugging. That's it, the two RFM95 modules are now breadboard and wearable friendly. Let's interface the RFM95 with ESP32 module on the wearable. Here is the circuit diagram to interface RFM95 with ESP32. If you are not comfortable with the soldering, we can still connect the RFM95 with ESP32 module on the breadboard and continue the project. This is the exact circuit diagram for our project. One is for sender and one is for receiver. I want to eliminate the messy wire connections and make the need to wear a board PCB for the both devices. I can design a PCB and order it on PCBWay.com, but I will do it for any specific LoRa project. I will continue with the wearable board for the simple demonstration of the LoRa device. Let's solder the female pin on the wearable board. Here I will make connections between ESP32 and RFM95 with the LED only, because this process will eliminate the wire connections. Also this works give me more satisfaction than anything. Always do what you love. There only you can find your happiness. So after one hour of soldering session and dedication, finally I have completed the connection part. The outcome of the efforts is very satisfying. Programming part. Open Arduino IDE. As we are using ESP32 module, we should have the ESP32 add-on installed in our Arduino IDE. You can install it directly from the boards manager. Suppose you don't know how to install it, follow the above video. We are going to use LoRa library that is developed by Sandeep Mistri. We can get this library directly from the library manager. Install the library from Sandeep Mistri only. Because I have tested this code with this library only. I don't know whether this code will work with other libraries or not. That is up to you. Now visit electronicsinnovation.com using the link given in the description below. Then copy the sender code and paste it in the Arduino IDE. Then save it with esp32 underscore lora underscore sender. Open new sketch. Then again go to the electronicsinnovation.com and copy the receiver code. And come back to the Arduino IDE and paste it and then save it with the name esp32 underscore lora underscore receiver. Before uploading the code to the module, check whether the frequency of the LoRa communication is allowed in your country or not. This LoRa communication frequency changes from country to country. You can check the frequency of the LoRa allowed in your country by visiting the following page. For example, I am from India. In India, it is 865 to 867 MHz. Specifically, I can choose these frequencies for uplink and these frequencies for downlink. Here I choose the first frequency for the communication and configure the same on the both sender and receiver sketch. 
This is the only thing you should be careful about. Now connect the ESP32 module which you want to program as sender with the laptop using micro USB cable. Then go to the ESP32 underscore LoRa underscore sender sketch and check the uploading configurations like board ESP32 dev module, uploading speed and select the right port. If everything is ok, upload it. After successful uploading, open serial monitor. If you see the following text on the serial monitor, congratulations, you have successfully made a point-to-point -point communication topology based LoRa center device. This device will send a message, hello electronics innovation follower, followed by a counter every 10 seconds. Connect another ESP32 module that you want to program as receiver with the laptop using the micro USB cable. Then go to the ESP32 underscore LoRa underscore receiver sketch and check the uploading configurations like board ESP32 dev module, uploading speed and select the another port that is different from the sender port. If you face any problem selecting port, just close the receiver or sender sketch and open it again. Then try the same process. If everything is ok, upload it. After successful uploading, open serial monitor. If you see the following text on the serial monitor, again congratulations. You have successfully made a point-to-point -point communication topology based LoRa receiver device. This device will receive the message sent by the previously programmed sender. The ESP32 print the message contents on the serial monitor along with the RSSI, where RSSI stands for Received Signal Strength Indicator. The RSSI measured in dBm and is a negative value. If the RSSI is closer to 0, the better the signal is. Typical LoRa RSSI values lies between 0 to minus 120 dBm. If RSSI equals to minus 30 dBm, the signal is strong. If the RSSI is greater than or equals to minus 120 dBm, the signal is weak. As you can see here, we are getting around minus 28 or minus 27 dBm, which means the signal is excellent. Both the devices are next to each of them. That is why the signal strength is very good. Let's test the best RSSI we can get. We need to adjust the distance between them to change the RSSI. So let's break the wearer board now. I am gonna cut the wearer board using this knife. Let's hope I will not damage the track of the PCB, otherwise I have to do connect them again. Yes, now the both devices are separated. Now we can adjust the distance between them easily. To test the RSSI, I have reduced the uplink interval from 10 seconds to 1 second. So let's test the RSSI now. First, I am going to put the devices at some distance and slowly reduce the distance to experience the distance to RSSI relation. As you can see here, the RSSI value is changing according to the movement of the receiver device. So from the following test, we have achieved minus 12 dBm RSSI that is the best RSSI we got. Unfortunately, I don't want to dare further as the modules may burn if the both antennas touch each other. That's all for this tutorial, making a point-to-point -point LoRa communication based LoRa sender and LoRa receiver. I hope you have enjoyed the video and learned something new from this episode. See you soon on the next innovative project. Until then, stay tuned to Electronics Innovation. Together, let's innovate the future with IoT. Bye-bye.